therapist, a uh, licensed massage therapist, and I'm also in something called an Eden Energy Medicine Practitioner, and I also do something called Energy Psychology. So what I've done with this class today is to say it's a combination of everything, and I'm going to be going through the body from the top of the head, going all the way down to the tips of the toes, and um, handout. Hopefully people can access that handout because in the handout, I give specific each, each um, exercise that we're going to be doing. And then also um, what part of the body kind of issues in the body, stress or. Um, so you can see that in the handout. So it's really helpful to have that. And in addition to that, um, I also have next to each. Where you these exercises if for example you didn't remember what i said or you want to do it on your own later on you could go on to youtube mm -hmm. exercise and you would be able to find somebody demonstrating that exercise so all of that is on your hand putting that there so um so without further ado we'll just go ahead and start starting at the top of the head but let's first your body you'd mentioned uh that you feel a lot of tension in your body well let's just and kind of hmm. the parts of the body that do feel tension, your shoulder, your neck, your back, and just sitting in your chair. I'm going to assume that we're doing more exercises sitting down because you're in your office. Kind of uh, know what tension is in your body. And now I want us to just Thing, and let's just kind of get out of our heads because so much of our day is stuck in our heads. Let's just kind of first getting in touch with our bodies, our feet on the noticing our kind of removing your moving your shoulders around, just sort of getting a little bit more relaxed. And let's just take an inhale through our nose and an exhale through our mouth. Slow down the breathing. So if we take an inhale to the count of five. Exhale to the count of six. So exhale, one, two, three, four, five. Six. And another inhale, five, one, three, five. And then exhale, six, one, two, three four, five, six. And I'm going to invite you to go ahead and do that on your own. And as you do that, I'm going to explain to you what the benefit of that is. So when you inhale through your nose, you're bringing a new energy into your body. And when you exhale through your mouth, you're releasing stale, stuck energy from your body. So nose, exhaling, and the benefit of inhaling slower to the count of five, going it down to the exhale count of six, what that does is it gets the fight or flight or it allows the body to start to tap into what is called parasympathetic nervous, which is the rest and digest of the body. So we want to go out of that fight or flight. So another inhale to the count of five. Exhale to the count. All righty. So now go ahead and open your eyes. The first exercise is called the crown pull. And this exercise, um, I want to see if I can put myself big here. Because right now I'm seeing one person. I guess it's all right. All right. So what we're going to do for the crown pull is we're going to take our fingertips and place them at the center of your forehead. And you're just going to push in and drag your fingertips out to your temples. And if you want to massage here a little bit, you can, because that's where a lot of people get headaches. A lot of tension right there. Okay, so now we're just going to move one fingers width up, pressing in and pulling out to the temple, massaging there at the temple. And then we're going to go up one fingers width. So of the hairline, pushing in and pulling apart. 
play each fingers width across the top of the head. So we're just gonna part, push in and pull apart. So we're gonna do this all the way to the back of the head. I'm gonna turn around so you can see me. All the way down the back of the head until you get to your neck and just kind of hang on your shoulders here. And then just release the stuck energy off the body. Oftentimes we think we don't have, actually have too much energy energy that's stuck in the body. So let's do it again. So pushing your fingers right at the middle of the forearm, come out to the temple and massage the temple. Good. One fingers with up, stretch and massage. Now we're going up to the hairline and we're pushing and pulling apart all the way across the top of the head. When we do that, we're opening up the suture lines of the head and we're also creating more flow for the cerebral spinal fluid. We're going all the way down the back of the neck, massaging down to the shoulders and just taking that energy off the body. Okay, so that's the called the crown pull. Ideally, you could do this exercise three or four. It's great for headaches. It's great for concentration and it makes your hair grow on top of that. So it's got... Okay, so the next exercise is all down stress response in the body. Most people are totally stressed out. So this is an easy way, sitting at your desk, a way for you to de-stress. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of start at that same place and we're gonna inhale and drag our fingers over to the temples with an inhale and then another exhale. And then we're gonna inhale up over our ears and then on the exhale, bring our hands to the shoulders again, and then drag the hands to the heart. So what we do with this exercise is we're getting the energy out of the head. We're getting the focus out of the head, bringing it down. So let's do that again. Temples and exhale. Again, up over the ears, backwards, trace down the side of the neck, and just drag your fingers to your heart. Release that tension. So that's called the triple warmer smoothie. That's one you can find online as well. So search for Eden Energy Medicine and then the name of the The next exercise is called hormones and to stretch and to open up the thyroid. So this, what you're going to do is you're going to take and place them right at the middle of the neck. Maybe I'll, we're going to so the sit one another. Put your neck back and you're just going to move around the neck, starting at the middle, pushing and go around to the other side. Starting at the middle, push away. Push away. And let's go back to the other side. So Pushing away, this opens up the thyroid, which processes the body. So it helps make space function. Uh, that is called the thyroid stretch or the next stretch. Next exercise is pulling on the ears. In Chinese medicine, the ear, it of the body itself. So if you look at a baby going backwards up in the ear. So you can do in Chinese medicine acupuncture just on the ear itself. So even if you were to just massage your ears, you're going to be stimulating acupuncture points along the body. So this is a really good exercise for concentration, for stress release. We're just going to kind of move up and down the outer edge of the ear lobe, the edge of outward. I like this. I'm sorry. But I like this one. This one feels good. This one feels good, next, right? This one and the yes. next. Yes. Yeah. So this is any of these are great when you're tired and sitting at your desk. You just need a break. All right. So that's called the ear pull. And then the next one is called the occipital ridge massage. 
So the head is the bony part of the head where the head connects to the neck. So all along that ridge, that's called the os. So what we want to do is we can either use that, put our heads back a little bit and just make little circles and massage all along that ridge back there. So just putting your finger, so I'm using my fingertips and I'm just coming under that ridge and just massaging out to the sides. And if, or you can take your arms like this, cross them and use your, use your thumbs to do the same thing. So that way, either way, you wanna put your neck back a little bit to be able to kind of lay into those fingers so that the weight of your pressing up into the this is where a lot of people here back here it's a good thing for headaches as well it'll you want to make uh four or five passes on most of these exercises because the more that you repeat them the more the body will start to shift the changes that it is that you're trying to make for it all of the Good for dealing with concentration, stress release, any kind of neck pain. Um, this next one, these next several, our phone, computer all the time, like our eyes take a lot of being we're doing day in and day out. So these next four are part of a series of exercises on energy medicine for the eyes. And you can find that by going to YouTube and just typing in there, energy medicine for the eyes, demonstrating this. So this first exercise, at your desk, you can just put your elbows on your desk like this. And we're first gonna just rub our hands together like this. And let's, good. And then rub them together again, so that you're making, that's it. And okay. Your big and cover your eye. Your tips are touching the hairline. And as I said, if you want to place your elbows on, that that can take some pressure off. Otherwise, just hold lightly here. Your thumbs should be at the stress point. Position. Hold this position. The more the muscles around the eyes will start. You can feel heat coming off your palm. Just allow the energy of your hands, the heat of your hands to relax those muscles. Have that feel, feel good. Seeing the eyes starting to open up a little. Mm -hmm. Feels good, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this next called the eyebrow a lot of tension or frowning and we're the pointer and the yep. you want to come under this occipital bone here and you just want to pull. You just want to pull the eyebrow together. So just starting at the inside pulling the eyebrow out. Then I go all the way along under the eyebrow itself. Let's make a few passes here. So back at the midline, up under the bone, taking the skin off the body. Again, that's gonna help relax those muscles. Let's do one more pass. So coming at the inside, under, the bone pulling away from this, this pulling the skin away from the skull good all right so this next exercise is called spindle pinching the eyes so spindle pinching is taking your thumb and your pointer finger and making tiny 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 little pinches like baby fairy pinches and so all around the socket of the eye we're going to just do little little tiny tiny everywhere so all along underneath along the eyelid 
on the inside, up by the eyebrow, underneath the eye itself, out to the sides, and then back. And all these little muscles under the eye start to get a, a chance to relax. Last one for the eye. So this is put, it doesn't matter. You can put two fingers on top of the eye. Doesn't matter. Um, if you fingers, you have one of them on the eye above the eyeball. You're just gonna tap with the eye along the finger. So just tap very, very lightly. That's touching the, along the finger that's touching the eyeball. It's, so if I'm starting here, let's say here, if I'm doing two fingers, I'm gonna come back. And that's a way to relax the eyeball and all the muscles around it. All right, to the other side, light along the, the eyeball itself. Okay, any comments or questions before I move to the next part of the body? Say anything not clear, feedback? Is that, can you do that kind of exercise on the eyeball, Diane. Um, is that really helpful too for people who are straining and staring at a computer all the day long, you know? Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. And even the dry eye, I mean, you know, some, I don't know about the dry eye side of it, but you wonder by just stimulating those meridians. Yeah, into absolutely. Yeah. The only time scary. you wouldn't want to do this exercise is if somebody has glaucoma oh, because yeah. the eyeball itself is small. So you'd be fine doing this exercises. But yes, it's it's helping with the lubrication. It's helping to relax all the muscle strain. So yeah. And if you do these exercises once a day, you're going to find that you really do get the benefits. It's do once you have to do it regularly anybody else have any questions before i move on okay. so the next exercise is the next we're going to be talking about now is the spine the shoulders the back the arms and the hands okay so we've moved out of the head now we're moving down these exercises are great for stress release pain flexibility helping to clear out the lungs headaches, and just overall general energy. So this first exercise, um, I'm gonna put my camera down a little bit lower. Um, this is actually a yoga pose, um, but it's a really great one to do when you're sitting in your office. And we're, what we're doing is we're focusing on stretching the spine because we want the spine to maintain its flexibility, particularly as we age. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your hands onto your kneecaps. I don't know if you can see my kneecaps there, okay. And we're going to take an inhale and and make our backs con yeah, concave. We're gonna ex inhale and then exhale and come backwards, moving backwards. So in yoga, so we're making posture of the cow and then the cat. We're moving backwards this way. So we're pull, pulling our, our spine in a concave and then convex position. And we're gonna, we wanna, we wanna connect up our breathing with this. So we're gonna take an inhale as we come forwards, expanding our spine and our chest forward. And then an exhale as we come backwards, stretching our spine the opposite way. Let's do a couple more of this. Inhale, forwards, and exhale backwards. So one more time, inhale and exhale. Okay, so a, a, another seated yoga pose, which is really good for the spine, 
is something called a seated twist, spinal twist. So the spine can go this way and the spine can go that way. So the first one was moving it this way and now we're gonna move it that way. So we're gonna sit with our hands, with our feet on the floor and we're gonna take our left hand and place it on, can you see? Placing it onto the right knee. Yes. And then we're yes. gonna turn our body. If you wanna stabilize, like I can stabilize my hand on the back of my chair. You can stabilize and try to turn and look as far backwards as you can behind your body with your eyes. So we're gonna hold that for a breath and then we're gonna exhale and come back to center. Good, and now we're doing an inhale on the opposite side. So right hand on the left knee, turn and twist, look as far back as you can. Hold that for a breath or two. And now exhale, come back to the center. Let's do that a couple more times, okay? So inhale, right hands, I'm sorry, left hands on the right knee, turn and twist, looking behind. This turn, this also is really great for any neck pain, headaches, coming back to the center. One more right hand on the left knee, turning and twisting, sitting up as straight as you can. Holding the pose. I just heard the crack, Diane. <laughs> All right. That's what we needed. <laughs> okay, great. So that's a super easy one you can do anytime at the desk. The next exercise is working with Chinese medicine acupuncture lines. So there are meridians in the body where the, where the um, acupuncture would put the needles. So you can work with those same points without using needles. So we are gonna be working on the kidney meridian and the kidney meridian in the body is what feeds all the other meridians. So when we tap on the body, the body recognizes, it's like speaking the body's language because of the heartbeat. So if we tap anywhere in the body, we're talking to the body. So if we tap on this kidney meridian, it's actually sending energy throughout the whole body because kidney meridian is the first of the 14 meridians and it feeds all the other meridians. So we wanna find that kidney meridian point. And it's easy to find, you just find the little knobs right here at the where your clavicle is, that bone there, and then where they meet. And then you drop down into the first rib cage, that first indentation. If you're not 100% sure where it is, you can use all of your fingers. You don't have to use just the one finger. So let's use all of our fingers. So we're gonna find the knob, drop down, and then we're just going to start tapping. And you actually wanna do a little bit of thumping. You actually wanna put some pressure here. It's kind of like jump-starting a car. When a car needs some energy, you can jump-start it. Well, that's true for us. We need some energy in the afternoon, right about this time of the day. This is when you need some energy. You can just bump these points, okay? So this is kidney 27. You want to inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Good. This is great if you're uh, driving at night and you're tired. You can just start thumping these points. It'll give your eyes some energy. It'll give your, your brain some energy. So it's a great point for energy too. All right. So that's called tapping or thumping kidney 27 point. All right. This next point is a lung acupuncture point. And our lungs take up so many toxins, they're constantly having to process through the body. This exercise is one that helps to clear that out. So to find this point, you're gonna extend your hands like this with your thumbs out like that, and then just bring them to your body where they land right at the corners on the edge, right there. And if you push in, it's probably tender. You feel that? Yes. Okay, yeah, that's lung one. Okay, that's the first point on lung meridian. So you can either massage it like that, or you can cross sides and massage it like this, either one, but you're gonna notice that it's tender, okay? When it's tender, that means your lungs need that. It means that there's some blockage, there's some kind of residual toxins or something that the, that the lungs have picked up that they need to, to, to release. So the more you can massage that, the better. So if it's tender, it means it needs it. And so this helps the lungs. It actually helps um, all the rib cage here because you could actually massage the whole rib cage because there's points on the rib cage. If you go 
between all of these bones, you might notice some points are more tender than others, um, but all of these will help clear out the lungs. So that's called lung one. And you wanna do it for like, you know, a minute or so. And if you come back to it every day, you might notice, oh, it's not so tender the next day. That means it's doing its job. What this does is it turns on a switch for the lymphatic system. And the lymphatic system is kind of like the garbage collector of the body. And it's what gets rid of toxins and, to and bacteria and viruses and things like that. So when you massage here and it's tender, that means the body's struggling. The lymphatic system of the body is struggling with that. But when the pain goes away, doing its job and it doesn't need as much help. So every day, try to do that a little bit. So that's called massaging lung one. Okay, this next exercise is actually a Qigong exercise. And I like it too, because it's also about opening up the lungs in the body. So this one is called bear swimming in the ocean. So this one, you wanna hold your hands like this and just move them out forward and then turn them and bring them back around like you're a bear swimming in the ocean. <laughs> so you're gonna inhale, bring your, like curve your, your spine a little bit and then exhale, bring it around. Good. Inhale, bring your back spine in a little bit and exhale, bring it around. Good. Let's do this for about a minute. So inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale. inhale, exhale. Let's do one more time. This is good for upper back uh, shoulder pain. Sometimes you get that pain like in between your scapula. This exercise is really good for that. Okay, so bear swimming in the ocean. All right. Now we're moving down to the hands. Um, there's so many different points on the hands that you could massage. All of them would be helpful, even if you didn't know what it was. So we're going to start with a self-massaging of the hands. So I want you to take your left hand and just start massaging the palm of your right hand. And just moving your, there's no, you know, method, you can use whatever you want, but just start to move the energy, start to take the energy off every single finger. Because the energy gets sucked in the body, like I said before, and we want to get it off the body and not carry it around. So we're using our hands with typing. You want to go finger by finger. You're using your hands on your phone. There's so many ways our hands are taking the brunt of what we're doing every day, that we want to assist these hands to get rid of all that stuck energy. Every single finger, just shake it off. And then when you're done the palm, turn over and start to move the energy up in between these bones and do the same thing again. So starting at the wrist, we're going to go up and just pull that energy. You can even turn and twist it and shake it off. And then coming back to the wrist, moving up, ring finger, turn and twist and shake it off. Middle finger. And then the pointer finger. shake it off, and then the thumb itself. And I want you to pay particular attention to the webbing in between the pointer finger and the thumb. This little part right here is a large intestine point, And I want you to spend some time massaging that. And notice, is it tender? For some people, it can be very tender. It's oftentimes connect. This is a great point to use if you have a headache. It can help with indigestion. But you just want to spend some time, that's called large intestine four, just massaging that webbing there and then pulling the energy off that thumb and releasing it. Now let's do the other hand. So starting with the left hand, however you need to use your thumb, use your other fingers, whatever you want to do is fine. These pads of the thumb oftentimes also get very tender. You want to spend some time massaging there too. 
So we're going to go up inside, moving the energy off, shake it off. Take it off. And then I'm coming to the thumb. And then once you're done the inside, you're going to turn it over to the back, starting with the wrist. Pulling up the back of the hand. Off each finger. Diane, do you by chance have like um a little like a little quick massage for you know like your wrist or something like that? Because I get a lot of pain like right here. And well, I, funny you should ask because, uh, of the mouse and stuff like that for work and stuff. We're gonna do we're gonna do that next. Yes. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> so that's exactly where we're going. So after we've done the webbing here for this large intestine point, then we're just going to shake everything off and then go like this with your hands like this, back and forth, back and forth like this. And then turn them around and go the other way. And now come back again and do this. And now just rotate them in every direction and forwards and backwards. And now this way and then turn them around and do it the other way. Now take your palm, your, your fingers here on the right hand and just pull those fingers back to stretch out that whole wrist area. And then switch to the other side, the other hand. Do the other hand, good. And then just come back and do it again, opposite side. And then opposite hand. So all of these exercises that I just mentioned will help because that's why you're getting, the energy gets stuck in all the tiny little nooks and crannies of the joints. The other thing would be to just go like this, back and forth with your hand on your arm. That actually helps strengthen the bones of the body. Anywhere you do this on the body where there's a bone, you're actually strengthening the body. The bones, you're telling the body to make more bone cells. So this is great for things like arthritis, but you wanna get it off the body. So that's where like this, the wrist is a perfect place where things get stuck. So just pull it off and shake it off. You can start even higher if you're having the pain up higher. So any and all of those would help. But let's just shake the whole arms. Let's shake everything. That's a great way actually to, actually we're gonna stand up for these now. Um, so let's go ahead and stand up. And any kind of shaking, tells the nervous system to release and relax, okay? So you can shake your arms, shake your hands, anything that sh that's like that's letting go of all the tension that you're carrying in the body will be helpful. Okay, anybody else have a question? Move on to the next set of exercises, comments, questions. We're good. So Next part of the body is lower back, hips, legs, and feet. Also, this good detoxifying the body, any kind of digestion, pain in the body, balancing the body, and energy. Okay, so this first exercise, Qigong exercise, is called knocking on the door. So I want you to be able to see me well. So you're just going to take your hands and you're just going to hit the back, turn and hit the back of your back like that. Can you see that, what I'm doing? So back here on either side of your spine are your kidneys. And remember I said kidneys were so important because that's where the energy starts in the body. So we want to tap those by twisting back and forth. So we're using our hands to tap like that. And what that does is it stimulates the energy of the kidney, the kidneys themselves. we are just tapping like that, knocking on the door of life. In addition to that, we can take back of our thumbs like this. So I've got my thumbnails, and I'm going to find that space line for my navel around to either side of my spine, directly behind my navel on either side of my spine. And I take my fingernails like this, and I just start stimulating that area. Just start massaging there. 
and do it vigorously. And you can rub all around. It helps the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands sit on top of the kidneys. Also, that's where the body secretes stress hormones. So by massaging here, support stress body so that it doesn't need to go into fight or flight as much, okay? Um, stimulating the kidney points. All right, the next two is working with something called the neurolymphatics. Remember I talked about this long point lymphatic system? Well, there are lymphatics in the body, but the ones that I want to talk about right now are on the sides of the legs, the outer sides of the legs, and the insides of the legs. So let me start. Let's see, what's the best place to start? Let me start. Hmm, I want you to be able to see me. Let me start this way. Can everybody see me? Okay, so from my hip down to my knee, all along this area, this is called the IT band. All along this area are points that can be very, very tender. And these points are, can be tender because they are lymphatic channels for the large intestine. So just like the lung has to process a lot of toxins in the air, our large intestines have to process a lot of the foods that we're eating. So this, this whole band right here can be massaged and it helps with any indigestion, any issue with the load with the colon, and also helps for lower back pain because there are points on the lower back that correspond to these points. So it's really hard to massage yourself for the lower back, but you can massage these points. And when you massage these points, it can actually get rid of lower back pain. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the hip bone and just start massaging very, very lightly up and down the leg. You can do this sitting down at your desk, that's fine. And there's no particular rhyme or reason as to how you do it. You can use your fingers, you can use your thumbs, what you could use your fist, whatever works well for you. You could actually use a tennis ball or something that puts a little pressure if you have trouble with your hands. You could use something other than your hands. But what you wanna do is you wanna look for the tender spots. Notice if there's any tenderness there and just make a note of it and then come back to the top. You wanna to go all the way down to your kneecap. So I'm going along the seam of the pant. And I found a tender spot right there. So I wanna put some pressure on that tender spot. That tells me the fact that it's tender, just like what I said with the lungs. The fact that it's tender means there's some blockage going on. It means that there's some issue with that particular lymphatic channel. So I want to take some time to massage that point. And I'm gonna actually bring it down slowly down off the body. So I'm gonna come back a few times. Does anybody notice any tenderness where they're massaging? Does everybody found a tender spot? Yes, good, okay. So same thing with the lungs. If you come back after you've done the massage and you come back to it again, over time, it's gonna be less tender because you've been able to unblock that. So I'm using two, both hands right here and I'm pushing, I'm, I'm kind of massaging it and pushing it down towards my knee and eventually off my whole leg. But I'm gonna spend maybe five minutes doing this if I was in doing it myself, spending about five minutes coming back until there's no more tenderness. Now, in terms of the pressure, you want to put a fair amount of pressure, but you don't want to bruise yourself. So if you don't put enough pressure, it's not going to work. If you put too much, you're going to hurt yourself. So you want to be between a five, like a seven, a six or a seven on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the most painful. You want to be like a five, six or a seven. So you want to feel the pressure, but not be painful, not so painful that you can't tolerate it. And you wanna make sure you're drinking water because what you do with this exercise is you're, you're flushing out the toxins of what your body is trying to process. So you wanna be able to drink water after you're doing this in order for the body to, to go ahead and flush that out. And you wanna always do both sides. So let's do the other side now. So I'm gonna put this leg here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna slowly just kind of visit the area in general and see what's tender, what's not tender. 
just notice if I found a tender spot or not. And also when you do that, when you start with a small gentle massage, you're not shocking the body because the body will react if you go in there with too much pressure. So you want to just kind of wake the body up and let the body know that we're going to be working on this. And that way it's more accepting of the work that we're going to do. So I found another little tender spot right here. So I'm going to spend some time massaging that. And I'm just going to kind of caterpill, caterpillar walk it down to my knee bone. And then come back a few times. Did everybody find a tender spot on this side of the leg? Both yep. of mine are close to my knees. Pardon me? Both of mine are close to my knees. Yeah, and everybody's different. And you might find one side of the leg is one side of the body is different than the other. Mine or both of mine are up in the middle. But yes, yeah, you're going to find it's different on different legs and different people. It's all, it's all unique to who you are. But what I love about this, I had back surgery that was not successful, and this was what got rid of my back pain. So this is fantastic for back pain, believe it or not, even though you're not working anywhere near the back. So that's called large intestine neurolymphatics. And now we're going to do the inside of the leg, which is called small intestine neurolymphatics. So the small intestine neurolymphatics are about halfway from the groin down to the knee, halfway up. And you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna take, I use my thumbs in this case. So I just stabilize with my hand on either side of the leg. And then I just start halfway up. And then I just start pressing in and notice what I'm noticing as I go down the leg. And this area is also fairly wide. It's, it's wider than the seam of your pants. It's like that wide. So you wanna spend some time doing that. And you mentioned yours are close to your knee. Oftentimes on these inside points, they're very close to the knee also. So the other thing that's great that, about this that I love is that, remember I said pain, the, the, the energy gets stuck in the joints, like with the wrist pain. Well, that's true for hip pain or for knee pain also. So somebody that has knee pain, this is a great thing to do because it will start to flush out all the toxins and all of the chi and the energy that's gotten stuck in the joint because the energy gets stuck in the joint. So when you start massaging here, you're actually freeing up those joints so that they don't have to be holding all that stuck energy and that can help with lots of different pain in the body. Okay, so I'm just kind of walking that back and forth, putting a little bit of pressure as I go. And I found a super tender point right here. What's great about the inside of the leg, it actually helps with shoulder pain because these points are connected to small intestine uh, meridian, which runs along the shoulder. So we're driving in our cars and we're all hunched up and we get shoulder pain from driving. This can help with that, even though it's not even close to the shoulder. This will help clear that out. Not to mention it helps all your um, indigestion issues as well. So constipation, diarrhea, anything you got going on there, this is great for that too. So it's like a three, four, three for one, four for one. All right, and then we're gonna switch to the other side. Same thing, we're gonna go inside the leg from the groin halfway down to the knee. We're gonna start by massaging a little bit, notice what there's any tenderness. And then I start walking my thumbs down to the knee, see where there's tenderness. I don't feel much of anything on this leg. So you could go, if, if if you can, like now I'm starting to feel something up here as I go closer, there's some, and this is all inflammation and many, many illnesses in the body are connected to inflammation in the body. So when we get rid of this inflammation, it can help so many different medical conditions just by releasing this from being stored in the body. What are you noticing? Anybody noticing anything on the difference between the inside of the leg and the outside of the leg? Anybody want to say anything? It feels like it's a little bit longer. I'm sorry? 
I feel like it's a little bit more um I don't know how ex- how to explain it like because I'm like parts like some there's times where like I'm pressing I don't know if I'm pressing the right <laughs> the right because I'm like I, I'll be like I feel like I want to laugh a little bit because it feels like it's tickling me a little bit so if it's tickling you you need to press harder okay you're, you're not pressing enough it should be painful I'm sorry to say not super painful but it should be uncomfortable okay so like on a scale of one to ten ten being I can't take another too much pressure be on like a seven okay that's a fair amount of pressure also it depends on what you're wearing like sometimes certain clothes will block it like but if it's too tight you know if you can do it at home at night like I used to do this lying in bed and it was just amazing helps with many many different things but you don't want it to tickle you want it to feel you want there to be some pressure there pressure okay yeah okay yeah now if you do it a little bit harder what do you notice it's I feel like here is if like compared to um the upper it's like it's more softer like the Mm -hmm. the tissue area over here is like a little bit it feels like a little bit more loose I guess than yeah up um by the knee area and stuff like that interesting yeah I mean that's the thing like it's just amazing every person's different and what you're experiencing is is you is is what's right for you you know yeah and so it's like you're just exploring that and seeing the difference between the two so yeah so I, and and also these muscles on the outside are usually a little bit tighter than on the inside of the legs too. So yeah, there's that going on as well. All right. So the next one also dealing with indigestion and anything related to the, um, the peristalsis in the body is working with stomach 36 point. So stomach 36 is a acupuncture point in Chinese medicine that's super famous. It's called the six mile point. And it's called that because uh, the story goes that people in the ancient times when the courier had to run to give a message or a soldier was running, they found that if they massaged this point, they could run an extra six miles or whatever it was. So that's how it got its name. So it's called the stomach 36, which is stomach meridian. It's a 36 point on that meridian line. And the way to find it is to just put your hand on top of your kneecap. And then where your baby finger lands, you're in between two bones there. So you got your shin bone and the other bone here. You're going to be in that muscle area. And you want to just start poking around and massaging there. Anybody that's got stomach issues, this point will be tender. If you're if you're not feeling tenderness there, just massage with two or three fingers because you're going to hit the point even if it's not tender. And this is a great point for stomach upset, nausea, indigestion, anything related to the stomach. Worry, it's a great point for worry because there are emotions associated with these points as well. So anybody that's a worrier, this is a good one to massage. Did anybody find it's tender? Yes. Yeah, it's tender on my side. You found it's tender on your side? Yeah. Do you worry? <laughs> no, it feels good though. You can tell it's working. Exactly. It feels good because the body's like, finally, somebody's talking to me. So it releases all that blocked energy. So this is a great one. Let's do both sides. You always want to do both sides because you want to balance the body. The body's always trying to come back to balance. So hand on the kneecap. The baby finger goes out to the side in between the bones. So you got your skin bone and the other bone here. You just want to kind of fiddle around, poke around there. Notice if you can find a tender spot. If not, it doesn't matter because you're using more than one finger. So it's all good. So you're opening up that blocked energy. Okay. So that's stomach 36. The next point is bladder 50 well i'm going to skip that actually in the interest of time because we need to finish by 4 30 right so let me jump down then uh we're going to go down to the feet and just like we did with the with the hands we're going to open the gates let's see if i can make this come forwards let's see if you can see my feet here can you see my feet on there yeah okay 
So just like we did, let me try this. This might be better. There we go. So just like we did with the hands, we're going to do this with the feet. And just remember I said that the ear is a replica of the body. It looks like a baby upside down. Same thing with the foot. The foot has an entire body mapped on it. So this is what's called foot reflexology. So this area right here along the instep, that corresponds to the spine. The toes are the head and the sinuses. So everything from the whole body goes straight down the back of the bottom of the foot. So anytime you massage there, you're actually giving benefits to all different parts of the body because the nerve endings end there. And when you stimulate that, you're sending energy up to the body. So first thing we wanna do though, is you wanna do the tops of the foot first. So that's what's also what we do with the feet when we call it opening the gates. We're gonna do the same thing with the feet. We're gonna open the gates here. So, okay, so starting at the ankle. Okay, so I'm gonna start at the ankle on either side, just like we had the problem with the wrist. And as you can get trapped on this ankle bone too. So you just want to massage all around the ankle, in front and behind. And now you're going to start moving down the foot in between the bones. And you want to take that energy off of every single toe and just get rid of it. So going down. Okay. So starting here and going down in between the toes and just pulling that energy, shaking it off. You can pay in particular, remember we spent a lot of time in between the webbing here with the hand. We wanna spend some time in between the webbing between the first and the second toe. So the big toe and the second toe, that's liver three. The liver in the body has to detoxify lots of different things as well as produce hormones in the body. So by massaging here, you're helping to support your liver. So it can also be tender. So just take all that energy off. And then we're gonna switch. We're gonna, we're gonna stop with the um, underneath. We'll, we'll come back to the underneath of the foot. Let's just do the top of the other foot now. Let's switch. So now I'm working on my left foot. I'm gonna start in front of the ankle bones below the ankle bones, behind the ankle bones. And now I'm going to start working on the top and pulling the energy off the toes. So you want to be in between the bones. That's where the energy gets stuck. And you might notice some tenderness there. You want to spend some time in this webbing in between the first and second toes. And then shake that off. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the bottom and we're going to work those gates. So, see. so I can, let's see the best way to do this. So I can start here with my thumbs. And I just kind of come and kind of walk them up the bottom of the foot. So just like I did with that small intestine neural lymphatic, I can just use both thumbs and massage walking up to the top and then pulling it off. Too. Doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And if you have any back issues, this line right here, this spine, this is this corresponds to the spine. So you can spend an extra time here going up that line and you might find it's tender. Right there, like that's the lower back. That's L4, L5 right there. And then just moving it out, just getting it off the body and making a few rounds. Shaking it off. And then we're going to do the other side, other foot. Same thing. I'm using both thumbs starting just above the heel and kind of catwalking it up, noticing where there's 
tenderness and spending some more time there. So I'm noticing my lower back, even lower than what the other foot was, is very tender for some reason. And just moving it up the top. And then if you have a tennis ball or any other kind of instrument, if it's too much for you to work with your hands, you can use another instrument like a tennis ball on your foot. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm not sure if you can see that. <laughs> can you see that? No. You just had it just a little bit lower. Right there. Okay. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm just rubbing that ball along the instep there. A little bit and lower. That... Can't see. Can't see oh, again. sorry. Right there. Can you see that? Yeah. yeah. So you see that I'm just roll, I'm putting some pressure, I'm supporting my leg with the other leg. So I'm not putting all my weight on this foot, but I'm putting some pressure here to release the tension and what's going on with that lower, that, that um, sole of the foot. And then just moving it out. So the tennis ball can be helpful or using your hands. And then the last thing we're gonna do is an exercise called the belt flow since we're standing. And that is just bringing the energy down off the body. So we have energy that gets stuck in the upper part of the body, the lower part, the right, the left. We just want to bring it all down, ground ourselves. So standing up, you're just going to reach behind your body and drag your hands to the other side. You can do this sitting down. So you're going to reach behind and bring it, bring it twice and then another time three times. And then you're gonna use your full hand and you're gonna go all the way down the leg and take the energy off your foot. Let's do that again. So we're gonna reach, I'm reaching on the left side, but it doesn't matter. I'm reaching as far as back as I can on the left side and I'm dra dragging my full hand to my right hip. I'm gonna do it two more times. Two and then three and then my full hand all the way down off my leg and off the foot. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting rid of whatever excess energy I'm carrying. And now we're gonna do the other side. So full hands reaching behind the right side, dragging it to the left hip once, dragging it to the left hip twice, three times the full hand all the way down the leg, and off the foot. And let's do it one more time. Okay, so one, two, three, and all the way down. And now let's have a seat and just close your eyes and notice your body. Notice what's different. Notice if there's other things that came up. Notice if you have less stress than when we started. And what do you notice? My body feels a little bit looser. A little bit looser. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and warmer. All right. Warmer. Yeah. Definitely warmer. Uh -huh. Warmer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We got things moving. We got the blood and the chi and everything moving. Any less noticing any less tension in mm. the body? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. Great. Wonderful. Thank you. So you're welcome. Try to do this every day if you can. Yes. <laughs> You'll feel uh, better definitely. every day. Good question. I, I did something on my right foot. I was playing tennis on the weekend and I slammed down the wrong way on the big toe. And it did something underneath there, that fascia area. But so so I was manipulating it's gotten a lot better. Uh, but I was just yeah. manipulating that. But you were saying that that's related to whole the whole like homunculus, it's like related to the spine. Well, you know, does that create any damage to the flow up and down my spine? I don't know. Oh no, 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 no. It's not like that. It's just a it's just a mirror. It's just a reflection yes. energetically. It's not physiological in yeah. that sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you can you can affect the positive change for the rest of the body by working on the soles of the feet. Quite plus it, it actually felt better. <laughs> it did Good. That. Yeah. Move it off the foot and that will help. Yeah, definitely. Good. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Okay, very good. 
Well, thank you so much. I enjoyed teaching thank you all. Thank you so much, Diane, for, for teaching us. I learned a lot, and especially that the foot and the neck, oh, that's going to do wonders for me because, <laughs> and my hand too. Thank good, you good, again. Good, good. Thank You're you. You're welcome. The long Very one, good. I the long one right here. I know. Thank we you. Need thank we need it. We all need you. it. Yes. You this are so was welcome. a great LYL event, and we appreciate you. We hope Thank to see you, you again. We hope to see another session because this right. is definitely good. a good session. Awesome. That's great. Thank Have you. a great day. You okay. too. Nice to meet Thank you all. Thank Take you. Care. Nice to meet you guys. See you soon, Nancy. Yes. Yeah, good to see you all. See you, Melissa. Bye.